Okay, now we're going to learn how to graph rational functions. Okay, and there is a six step process that will always give you a graph of a rational function. The first is you need to factor and simplify everything. Okay, the second is to find the x intercepts. If you remember, finding x intercepts is setting y equal to zero. So we want the fraction equals zero. And when a fraction equals zero, we really just need the numerator equal to zero. Third is finding y-intercepts, and if you remember, we do that by plugging in y equals zero, and excuse me, x equals zero, and seeing what we get. Okay. Fourth is finding vertical asymptotes, which if you remember, is found by setting the denominator equal to zero. Fifth is horizontal asymptotes, which we do by looking at the degrees on top and bottom. And last is gonna be by using a sign chart. So, we go over to this first problem, and it's already factored and there's nothing to simplify. X-intercepts are everywhere the numerator equals zero, which in this case is just X equals negative one. Y-intercept, well, we're gonna plug in X equals zero, so I get one squared or one on top. On bottom, I get negative one times two times negative three. This gives me a Y-intercept of one-sixth. Vertical asymptotes are everywhere the denominator is zero. So x equals one, negative two, and three. And then horizontal asymptotes, well, if you imagine multiplying this out, you get x squared on top and x cubed on bottom. And whenever the bottom degree is bigger, the horizontal asymptote is simply y equals zero. Now we're gonna do a sign chart. So every factor gets a horizontal line And we get a line for the total. Okay. We're going to put a vertical line everywhere something is zero. So at positive three, negative two, positive one, and negative one. Now we're going to put our plus or minuses. Remember that when we have a squared term, everything is plus. Otherwise, it's negative to the left positive to the right of wherever that line is zero. Now when we're using a sign chart to graph a rational expression, I don't actually care about the zeros on the bottom line, which is good because they won't all be zeros. Some of them are zeros and some of them are undefined. But I already have everything from that information in my list. So instead I'm just going to multiply down my negative signs. All right, now we're going to start by graphing the information in our list. So our intercepts and our asymptotes, okay? All right. So first of all, I have an intercept at x equals negative one and y equals one sixth. And I have vertical asymptotes at one, negative two, and three, and a horizontal asymptote at zero, which is just along the x-axis. Now, the graph has to hit those intercept points, and it has to fit in between the asymptotes. And how it does that is given to us by the sign chart. So before negative two, the sign chart tells us the graph is negative. So here's negative two. It must fit in between these two asymptotes, and the only way to do that is either to scoop here or to scoop here. And we pick the one where it is negative the whole time. Between negative two and negative one, the graph is positive. Okay, I know at negative one it must end at the intercept, and I know it must follow this asymptote. So it's either gonna look like this or like this. And the one that is positive the whole time is right there. Between negative one and one, it's positive. I know it starts here and goes through here, and then I know it follows that as asymptote, and it has to do it staying positive the whole time. Then, between one and three, the graph is negative. It has to fit in between these two vertical asymptotes. So there's actually three ways to fit in between two vertical asymptotes. 
You can be a scoop, but that's part negative and part positive. You can be a horseshoe up top, but that's positive the whole time. Or in our case, it's going to be a horseshoe down below that's negative the whole time. And then lastly, after three, the graph is positive. It must fit in between our two asymptotes, so it's going to sit right there. Okay. We're going to do one more example. Okay. Again, first step is to make sure it's factored and simplified. And now we're going to go through our list. X-intercepts are where the numerator is zero, so negative two and positive three. Y-intercept we get by plugging in X equals zero. So on top I'm going to get six, on bottom I'm going to get negative five, so negative six-fifths. Vertical asymptotes are where the bottom is zero, so X equals negative five and positive one. Horizontal asymptotes, well if I were to multiply this out, I'd get negative x squared on top and positive x squared on bottom. Since it's the same on top and bottom, I cancel those x squareds and I'm left with a y equals negative 1. And now I'm going to do my sign chart. Okay. So each factor gets a horizontal line. And we get a horizontal line for the total. Okay. There's a vertical line everywhere something is zero. So at negative five, negative two, one, and three. Now we're going to put our pluses and minuses in. Okay. One of these terms though looks a little bit different than all the rest. This one right here. Normally, we would have x minus 3, but this term says 3 minus x. And when it's reversed like that, so that the x is negative, your pluses and minuses are reversed. So it's positive to the left and negative to the right of its 0. All the other ones are normal, meaning negative to the left and positive to the right of wherever they are 0. Now I multiply down 3 negatives, 2 negatives one negative, no negatives, one negative. And I now have everything I need to be able to graph the rational function. So I'm going to start by plotting my intercepts and asymptotes. Okay, so I have x-intercepts at negative 2, positive 3, y-intercepts at negative 6 fifths, I have vertical asymptotes at negative 5 and positive 1, and a horizontal asymptote at negative 1. Now I'm going to use the sign chart to guide how I put the graph inside these. So before negative 5, the graph is negative. It must fit in between the asymptotes and remain negative, so it's going to look like this. Between negative 5 and negative 2, it's positive. It must end here at negative 2, so it's either going to come from down from the asymptote or up from the asymptote, and remaining positive forces it to look like that. Between negative 2 and 1, it's negative. I know it has to start here and go through here, and I know it has to follow the asymptote. So the only way it can do that is to go down like this. Between 1 and 3, the graph is positive. I know it must end here at 3, and I know it had to follow this asymptote, either like this or like that. The only way to do it and stay positive is to follow like this. After 3, it's negative. I know it must start here, and I know it must follow that asymptote. So we have our list. We get intercepts, asymptotes, and then a sign chart in order to graph rational functions.